The measurement problem of quantum mechanics can be explained if quantum physics represents the physics of time as a physical process. If time is an emergent property with the future coming into existence with each new light photon oscillation or vibration, then the measurement problem can be seen as the same problem we have predicting any future event as time unfolds photon by photon. I believe this is what we are seeing when we see an artist at work. We are seeing new light photons, oscillations or vibrations continuously coming into existence relative to the actions of the artist. A continuous flow of cause and effect. We have free will because the wave-particle duality of light forms an interactive process continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. If our eyes were more sensitive to the light, we would be able to see that everything is radiating light waves continuously, forming a great dance of energy exchange. This forms a process of continuous change that we see and feel as the aging process and as the continuous flow of time itself. In this theory, the difference between quantum mechanics and classical physics is because quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process. This gives us an objective understanding to quantum mechanics with the quantum wave particle function or probability function representing the forward passage of time itself with the future unfolding photon by photon. Therefore, the uncertainty of quantum mechanics known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that is formed by the probability wave function is the same uncertainty we have with any future event within our own reference frame that we can interact with creating a future relative to our actions. In this theory the parallel universes of string theory are just future possibilities and opportunities in our one three-dimensional universe of continuous energy exchange continuous change, or what I like to call continuous creation, photon by photon. Because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force, in this theory electrical activity in the brain is the most advanced part of this universal process. This gives us an objective understanding to electromagnetism. We have to do work by putting energy into something to create the electrical potential and by doing so we create our own future within that reference frame. Therefore the electrical potential of consciousness is always in the moment of now within its own reference frame looking out at creation comprehending this process as the flow of time with a past and potential future. Within this interactive process of constantly changing waves of energy continuous energy exchange only the moment of now is real for each individual observer. The hand and eye will interact with the wave-particle duality of light just like any other object. In this theory, creation is truly in the eye of the beholder. The uniqueness of every life form, of every individual moment, of every sunset can only be formed out of an infinity of possibilities. This might sound far-fetched but it is only extending Einstein's relativity to everyday objects and individuals. In the theory of general relativity, we have an interactive process. When an object moves, space-time moves, relative to the energy and momentum of the object, therefore forming the curvature of space-time. In this theory, this is a universal process. Everything from the smallest creature to the largest planet forms its own future space-time by slowing up the rate the time flows. Objects just free-fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate that time flows. Therefore gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force because time is being formed photon by photon. Where some theories see disunity, disharmony and chaos this theory sees oneness, unity and harmonics that can only be formed by one universal process 
of spherical symmetry, forming and breaking. This organization is formed by the quantum wave particle function or probability function having spherical symmetry. As the energy levels cascade down, it forms greater degrees of freedom for the disorganization of entropy that we have in the second law of thermodynamics. This broken symmetry can be seen in the physical world as spiral symmetry in the form of the Fibonacci spiral being visible almost everywhere in nature. This theory explains a greater reality of one creative principle behind the laws of physics, forming something like a sounding board of a musical instrument that resonates with the vibrations of one's own thoughts, efforts and actions. In this theory, mass is a byproduct of time dilation. When time slows down, it takes more effort to move an object from A to B, and this is seen as an increase in mass. Also, Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration falls out of this theory. Because energy and momentum have to increase for an object to accelerate, time dilation will increase relative to the acceleration. Therefore, we have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. This will be felt as inertia in the direction of the acceleration. Therefore, we have Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Unless acted upon by a net unbalanced force, an object will maintain a constant velocity. This theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life, explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process that forms the uncertainty and probability that is needed for the great game of life. But above all, this theory gives us an objective understanding of time as a process of continuous creation. Even a rose blooming will create its own arrow of time within its own reference frame. This fits in with the reality of our everyday life with a past and potential future that we can interact with from the center of our own reference frame turning the possible into the actual. This can be in the form of art and poetry. Therefore even a dancer on the dance floor will interact with this process forming their own future space-time relative to their energy and momentum of their own actions. In this theory creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder. I have tried to make this theory as simple as possible in the belief that everyone should be able to understand it. In my other videos I explain this theory in much greater detail. As an artist I am outside the scientific community so any help you can give in promoting this theory will be gratefully welcomed. Please subscribe and rate.